Hello, and welcome to As We See It. My name is Robert, and I deeply apologize to the community for not being here uh, each week, but I have been on a mission in finding other people in this community that have a message, a very strong message, and today I invited a, a gentleman named Jerry Mif so, Mif I can't pronounce his name very well, but so <laughs> I will how, allow him to do that. But we are, we are here together to uh, see things uh, from each other's eyes and to understand what is going on in our community here in Auburn, California. Jerry, thank you for coming to ACTV and bringing these issues and yourself to our cameras. Uh, you're welcome, Robert. Uh, Jerry, may I ask you, please, um, uh, could you give us an idea of where you were born and what school you went to? Well, let's see. Uh, I'm born and raised in San Francisco. Uh, my last name is spelled, is said Mifsud, and it's, it's hard for people. It's hard for me at times. I wish it was Miller. But um, I'm born and raised in San Francisco in 1945. My, my last name, I need to uh, get Maltese out there, Malta, the island of Malta, where my, my parents and uh, grandparents came from. Um, I was educated in San Francisco, went to Catholic high school, a uh, public uh, school as well. Uh, did a little dabble in college with uh, political science and starting to make inroads to, uh, I wanted to get into the culinary arts program. I could never get into it, but showed my desire to want to get into cooking, which I've done, uh, recently retired, 51 years. So uh, my education, my God, San Francisco was more than just a school education. In the 60s, it was a, a cultural education. So uh, between food and uh, various things to, uh, uh, to get involved with, uh, uh, God, any number of them. You had civil rights, you had women's rights, you had gay rights, you had all sorts of other proponents to be active and uh, let your, uh, your voice be heard. And, and that's what I'm a little bit about now because I'm a senior, I want to give a senior's perspective. Other seniors may find uh, some way, uh, uh, may enlighten them in some way to, to be active or more active. But I want to show my link back into recovering from a near homeless state and show my link in the past quickly to the people in my life that have been involved in these issues that have made a big difference to me, but more so a big difference in the community. I'll never reach their heights, and I don't hope to, but I want to be involved like they were good community servants. Well, well thank you, Big J. Um, now, we spoke earlier, and, and we were talking about some of the individuals that you have met and have been a, a very personal into your, into your life. Uh, could we talk a little bit about some of these individuals that you've met on your way to, to Paso County? Well, yes. Oh, my God. You know, we're talking 40, 50 years of individuals that I've met have been of every uh, spectrum um, in, uh, in San Francisco. The personal ones in my life, and I'll allude back to that, made the, the foundation for me to know that it's inside of me was, one, my, uh, my grandma, Georgia, uh, who was a holy woman in the island of Malta, so revered that when she died, instead of going to the cemetery, they opened up the streets and placed her body in there, and those who walk over her are spiritually invigorated. What a great woman. She, she helped the homeless and the poor in Malta. Then my grandpa Joe, uh, my mom's side, he fed the people during the Depression who were homeless and hungry from his grocery store. His funeral, I couldn't go to it, but the line was, I, I was told it was real long. I just got a picture of him the other day. I'd never seen him as a young man in the grocery store. And oh, the wavy hair and the butcher jacket. What a proud man. I'm so glad he's my grandpa. But it would be my oldest brother. This, this man was phenomenal, uh, Father James Mifsa. If you type that in to YouTube, you will get uh, encouragement, invigoration, another point of view, some hope in your life. So uh, my brother was just huge in Korea, in Hawaii, 
in, in uh, Queen of Apostles. But these are the people that set the foundation. I've met many, many of the people that have inspired me. Mostly Jesus, my faith. I'm raised a Catholic. Following in the path of a brother who's a priest, you can imagine, you know, how, uh, but anyway, uh, I, I, he still enlightens me and pulls me into the, uh, to the center. But these are the people. In San Francisco, it was different. Um, other people have influenced my life. The one link between me uh, and the, the cooking world, and also a man would come into my life that would be like a father image. I was lacking that. Um, for a lot of uh, concerning reasons. But nevertheless, Old Pasquale in San Francisco at 8th and Irving, if you ever get out there, has a pizzeria and Italian food that's unbelievable. And if you take a peek on the wall, you'll see a picture of me. But he would uh, teach me about integrity, honor, morals, everything a kid needed in Italian food. I'm Maltese, but I cook Italian food. I say I'm an Italian cook, but I'm Maltese. And I'm a, a good basic Italian cook. cook. Um, those are the main people that shaped my life, that I look to in my heart, because they're not here now, and uh, that keep me doing what I'm doing. I could, I could do what they've done. My brother, the priest, he took off his collar one time, because he said, Jerry, you don't need this to, to do what I do. You do it in your own way. Get in your community. You can make a difference. And then he put it back on and heard my confession and passed out. <laughs> uh, not quite like that. So, uh, given for what you've already expressed here, uh, I, I'm understanding that from from the '60s, well, fi from the '50s, '60s, and the '70s, and up to this date today, that I've, I I see that you've met a variety of people, sure, which it inspired you to 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 be who you are today, other than, than your own well. Well, choices. Absolutely. And I see that that in these times, and in these uh, moments, people have all have somewhat struggled in their own personal lives and with the, their community. Mm -hmm. So, is it safe to say that that uh, by their their uh, participation in their own community has helped you to? Uh, be who you are today and, and why you're here today? Well, I've, absolutely. You know, I've, I've made mistakes like anybody else. I've learned from my mistakes. Maybe not the first time, maybe the second. But I, I would never grow unless I realized my mistake in this. And people have been, people that I've met and I've dealt with uh, in all the facets of the restaurant business are in the community. I had to wrestle in the community uh, when you had to talk about issues. You wanted to be passive aggressive. Uh, now I know to be more compassionate and assertive, but uh, nevertheless, I, I had to speak out. There was there was many times uh, um, I I saw corrupt uh, union presidents uh, uh, fall before me, um, and I uh, was I participated in unions. I, uh, I I I went on KGO radio one time to help out a friend whose mom was a hit and run victim, 72 year old uh, Russian immigrant victim in San Francisco. He asked me to help him out uh, because he had uh, communication difficulties. They were all uh, f foreign Jewish people and asked me to help him out. And, and people ask me because I, I have a good heart. And nevertheless, I did. I ended up on the radio talking to a million people. I had the San Francisco Police Department all worried about what I was going to say. I had actually, through my investigativeness, and you'll see me do this in the community, I found out things that the San Francisco Police didn't want. And uh, nevertheless, I, uh, I said what I needed to say, but I was very careful. No, the family came out of it feeling good. They wanted to have a feeling that they'd done something for their loved one. I gave them that. Mm -hmm. You know, they sat in the booth while I was on the radio, uh, waving me on. And okay, so uh, again, I don't, I don't see this being passive or aggressive. I see this with compassion, that, that you have taken on responsibilities where other human beings were not able to do. And which I, again, uh, by meeting you and talking with you for the last week or so here, it, it has been a, a great fulfillment on my part. So uh, I thank you for being a part of, uh, of my life and allowing me to be a part of your life. I appreciate it. It's it a very great honor for me. Um, Jerry, you, you were talking about some of your, your cooking, your pizza.
Yeah. And it seems like when we were talking about that earlier, you just light up about this pizza. <laughs> uh, what is it about the pizza that, 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 that has become your passion somewhat? <laughs> well, what is it about the pizza? It, it could boil down to the pizza man spinning the pizza. It's iconic in America. <laughs> uh, I've been a good Italian cook, and I don't downplay being a, a good pizza man. Pasquale taught me that first. Before I was throwing the pizzas all over the place, he gave me a wet towel and said, you go practice with the towel. It was too expensive. But pizza, I, I, I put on a, a pizza show for, uh, for the kids at Little Fox uh, about 25 years ago. And I come in, I talk about... Uh, uh, how to treat one another, thank, they were smaller, the basic kind of stuff. And all along, I, uh, I make a pizza, uh, I spin it up in the air, but that, that is what they want to see, and that's fine. Um, it's part Has it ever landed on your face? Or oh, you my, I, I let it land on my face once, because people <laughs> wanted to see that. Pasquale <laughs> knew it, he said, Jerry, give them something they'd never seen. I opened up about five big pizzas and made one huge one. I threw it up in the air and it landed on my head. It was funny, I guess. <laughs> it is funny. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, thank you. But so, pizza and uh, pizza and cooking um, are integral uh, in, in my life. I've cooked. I've cooked in New York. I've cooked in Portland, Oregon. Um, I opened up a vegetarian pizzeria in New York. Helped open up Portland, Oregon. I cooked at the Harbor Side, overlooking the Willamette River. Real nice restaurant. And um, so cooking would take me to Reno, and then the people that really inspire me, physically inspire me, came into my life. <laughs> and uh, I have to smile because I have such a great relationship with my former wife, and it's an inspiration to uh, the children not to be victims of divorce because they sometimes endure things that we don't know as your parents are wrangling on the how to do the end game. The kids are internalizing things. And I would learn over the years how to deal with that because it, uh, it just is an end for them. They need help through it. And I would realize that through my own family. But I would meet uh, Jenna, who's my soulmate, my best friend. <laughs> and uh, then we would have two great kids, Melissa and Joe, Melissa Marianne to very bright, intelligent, compassionate children that have the world at their feet. And um, they are starting to walk a little slower. Yeah. They're into it. I'm trying to keep up with them. <laughs> I'm trying to keep up in this digital, bit, bit boom, you know, the black box is in the hand constantly, <laughs> which I'm really concerned about. I could talk about how distracting, we don't socialize, interaction, mm -hmm. face to face. With this thing going on, it's it's important to have my generation spawn that. Let's not forget when you call OGs, OGs, and you move on into the great world that you have before you, that it was spawned by the 60s, set the foundation for many of the things that we have that grow and take it. I appreciate that. It's grown in areas that are way beyond my uh, rotary phone or uh, my you underwood still have a rotary type. Phone? Well, I pre I say that <laughs> just to say I still have one. they think I'm OG, so I'll OG them, you know. Yeah. Rotary phone and underwood typewriter. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. yeah, I still have one of them too. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, I my reflections are about a senior. You'll hear that because this is what we endure. This is part of our last chapter how I've been active has been quite interesting, quite interesting. Mm -hmm. well, good. Uh, okay, so you were, you were talking about all these travels in New York. Have you ever been in the, in the Marines or services? I uh, tried in 63 to, uh, to go into the Air Force, okay. and I wanted to go to Vietnam then. And um, boy, Vietnam, my God. Vietnam happens, John Kennedy dies, the world changed then, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, uh, I was apathetic, empathetic to the, the vets that came back. I couldn't serve. I was against the war, but the soldiers, uh, I, was, uh, I, I stayed with a, a group that were detoxing the soldiers back from Vietnam. Mm -hmm. So laterally, I was involved in the encounter. The aftermath. And I, I saw it all through their faces and their yeah. voices, yeah. and it was hell. Um, yeah, well, I, I'm totally, I was totally uh, against the, the war, 
but I was totally with my with our soldiers. We have to yeah. hug them. Yeah. Uh, there's not many. Well, they're still around. I hug any vet, any veteran. You hug them. Now we have vets from uh, the Middle Eastern uh, mm -hmm. conflicts and what have you. Always hug a vet. They put their life on the line, and they looked at at death on a daily basis. Yeah. How do you continue on after that? Yeah, it's. I would not want to experience it, you know, but by looking at them, I, I feel a, a sense of, of experiencement from them, you right. know, as being able to see, uh, you know, their eyes and, and how they talk or how they try to talk or communicate, right. you know. But usually most of them I've talked with they have really just would rather not talk about it. No, it's no. it's not easy for them to talk no. about it. No. You know, you've seen enough Vietnam movies, you yeah. know, you have to understand um, what these uh, men have witnessed yeah. and have some compassion and yeah. tread very slowly and sensitively. Yeah. Yeah. You don't walk up to him and grab him and hug him, but you want to eventually get there. Yeah. He may feel the jitters from a war that took place 50 years ago, 40 years ago. Okay, so so with us, since we've been talking, okay, I, I see this gravity moving forward about the compassion, the, the depth of, of human needs right. and wants and desires and the changes that are so up to be needed to be changed, mm -hmm. which brings us up, you know, to, to where we're, we're moving to, to the main points of what we're here for this interview for, is that basically the homeless, the shelters, the panhandling, the uh, lack of, say, a stop sign, uh, the desecration of cemeteries. Right. Uh, we have a numerous, you know, of, of views, sure. opinions, and where our voices says, you know, we need to say something, we need to do something in our community. Right. Uh, yes, it is nice to see all these uh, individuals that are in our Congress and presidents and all these people that are doing well in their lives. Right. right. However, what I believe, because uh, I'm really into this one, is that we really don't see why they're there, what they're doing after their their time on the camera, what is it that that we're right. paying them for to do? Right. Is it doing? Is it getting done, or is it not getting done? What we've hoped these politicians and so right. on people are, are are mandated to do, Absolutely. and why is it taking so many years right. of countless lives right. and d d drama right. to to even come back and even address some of the issues that should right. have been taken care of years and years ago? Yeah, there's no doubt about it. No doubt about it. The um, dealing with government, you know know as we perceive that uh, now plays out in the community and uh, so they are an element that are essential the community is essential um, when we start to now we're getting to the point about the homeless issue uh, homeless shelter homeless encampments vagrant encampments panhandlers it's a mixed bunch um, if anyone thinks that by petitioning when I petition for uh, the homeless shelter and, and the issues around it that I have any insensitivity, um, I was near homeless. I was in a homeless state of mind. I know the homeless state of mind before you hit the street. That much I can attest to. No, I didn't hit the street. But those two years before, I saw it coming. Those six months before, it was like, it was hell and knowing that you don't have a shelter to go to here in well Auburn? you know I'm, I'm uh, you're disorientated you got to understand the frame of mind so we understand kind of like that uh, uh, homeless is, is not a lifestyle choice it's an evolution and it starts right there prior to hitting the streets where financially uh, everything is discombobulated you, in my case I I couldn't get a job in the last two years because nothing against Auburn, it happens in all communities, seniors are profiled. And I was profiled coming into places. I knew it. They were looking at gray hair. And um, uh, coupled with that and finances, hopelessness, depression, the weeks before, the months before, I was running out of money. Uh, the state of mind was, was terrible. I was, if it wasn't for uh, my ex-wife, former wife, former mother-in-law, uh, coming in and helping bolster me. Um, Mel's uh, here, Mel's driving here in town. The people are just Christian hearts, good hearts, uh, helped me out. I won't say how. 
Um, they're humble people. They don't look for a pat in the back. They got a great burger, though. I feel that. I worked for Mel's a long time ago. I knew Mel Weiss. <laughs> mm -hmm. He knew me. And you, ima I imagine you being with the face of Mel's Diner. Right? You have that face, you know. Of oh Mel's yeah, Diner. and I got the yeah. face of a burger. Is that what you're saying? No, just the Mel's Diner. You, you got a hot dog. Now, there's a face. variety of, of Mel's there. Mel's okay, I how guess. I look like Mel, I'm not sure. <laughs> but anyway, uh, he w he was a good man. I worked with his sons that uh, we created the first sandwich health food sandwich shops in San Francisco <coughs> with uh, several restaurants in the financial district. Your first avocado sprout, nine grain bread, um, macro burger, or, uh, uh, soy burger, veggie burger, something burger, along with we were selling too many hamburgers and hot dogs. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so it was a mixed message to a generation that wanted a health food, but you know we had all the trimmings uh, but it was a good run. Um, so you're a person that likes to feed the body, but I'm also seeing that you're an individual that's hoping to feed the minds and the souls and the spirits of our community. Am I correct here? Well, I mentioned that in one of my letters uh, to the editor when I followed up on the, uh, the misspelled sign here in Auburn. And um, my sentiments uh, came out there. You began to hear my head and heart. Uh, all about that, what resonated about that sign was about speeders. So I addressed the speeders in town, these teenagers and the adults uh, for speeding. I addressed the seniors and it gives me a chance to give a quick shout that uh, I know seniors don't speed, they probably go too slow. But there is a time, there is a time when we have to consider giving up the keys. And it's one of the points of integrity in your life and freedom that you hold on to. You may be holding on to them in the years where you, you're missing a beat on the road. You're not as fast. And you, you can't let yourself venture there. If, if you see that coming on, then you have to step up. If you hear people around you, and you more than likely do, Dad, you got to give up the keys. Don't wrestle with them. You will at first. Give up for, for a higher thinking and uh, consider leaving the keys to somebody else. They'll be a chauffeur for you. And that brings me into as my recovery. When I think about driving, my recovery into out of homelessness would be Seniors First. And Seniors First, which uh, was there for many things, you could call them at up and uh, they'll talk about me left and right. They helped me out with so many things I got to know them. But um, Seniors First helps out seniors uh, here in Auburn and does a variety of things from, uh, from meals, from uh, resources, uh, driving. They're having a problem right now, uh, and it's been in the paper, with the Meals on Wheels program. So you have to look towards, if you're a senior, and I'd like you to be proactive, old folks like me. If you want to do something about yourself, then, then uh, if people think uh, that you're not viable and what have you, or where's your place, well, get a pencil and paper and write to seniors first. If you want those meals, write to them or call them up and ask them where you need to direct your attention because the program that they have for Meals on Wheels has been taken away. You want it back. So say so. Give them your voice. So call up uh, seniors first and find out how you can support them because they've supported you. They've given you those meals and they're going to be kept from you and controlled in a certain way. That's going to be difficult. So give them a call. Can I say 889-9500 uh, is the phone number of seniors first? This is nothing derogatory. Yeah, no, that's this fine. That's fine. I, I, I advocated for seniors first one time. They, they asked me to because I was a good recipient of their stuff and their meals. And so when the Auburn Journal did an article, uh, they asked me to step forward. So I've seen people ask me to step, step forward. And uh, so we come to the homeless shelter issue, and um, it, it started out with uh, the zoning, and um, we could talk about that. But how I got involved was because I knew my neighborhood that a zone was going to come in. I'm all about, if anybody thinks I'm city bound with all this, whatever I'm doing, I'm all about doing whatever I can in my neighborhood. That is first, foremost, and last. By live and dying there, the character of a person is known, I believe, by how he treats his neighbors. 
that tells me an awful lot, like friends, but your next door neighbor. So in petitioning um, for the zone, I got to know everybody besides uh, several hundred uh, people that I talked to, merchants and apartment comp. I talked to everybody around. But uh, the, the homeless issue went from a zone and then what ended at the October 28th meeting, the words where it put a zone in uh, Auburn Ravine, the words vagrant and panhandlers resonated. And so I immediately, with uh, after I already had a base of people interested in uh, the neighborhood, we immediately uh, formed a small little group that I spearheaded to now go to from the zone issue away from that and then go into how we're going to deal with vagrant and furthermore vagrant encampments and that's where we're at now is the encampments uh chief roughcorn doing a great job him and bridget powers handled the panhandlers which are an extension and connected to the vagrant vagrant encampments we address uh, chief and uh, the way to handle the encampment kind of situation is to call in and he'll address it. They'll send their men out. They have to watch themselves by law how they proceed, especially in picking up an encampment. If you pick up an encampment wrong, you can actually be sued, and that's been done by homeless people. They mm -hmm. brought suits against the city because they misproperly handled um, a lot of debris. Uh, not to be disregarded, because that debris in and amongst uh, material and what have you is probably their last little bits of who they are. So though it's dirty, sensitivity has to be used. But we saw at that point that vagrant encampments uh, were an issue in my neighborhood, the Auburn Ravine neighborhood. I'm about neighborhood issue. And we have a long 20-year-old encampment starting out by the Wells Fargo go bank and proceeding uh, alongside the apartment houses and uh, so it's now we're at the encampments and uh, and how to deal with that and so I knew uh, uh, to uh, go along the trail and identify it uh, uh, take pictures of it I took pictures of encampments pictures of a cemetery that we found there sent them off to uh, Chief Roughcorn, and then following that, in uh, November 19th, Auburn Journal, you can actually see okay, the Gary, you may, Okay, now, we are definitely on, on the, the shelters and, and the camera and the pan out, okay? Well, what I'm gonna ask you here is, why? Why would it be so important to have a shelter in a zoning area versus not to have one what what is it that the community the community doesn't really understand why it would be more important to have one than not to have one i don't know how fast we are in getting a shelter uh we do need that it would give them a place to go they wouldn't uh, they wouldn't loom in the neighborhoods. We're talking about the body we, of, of homeless people. There's a small percent that actually want a shelter. Unfortunately, transient vagrants are the bigger percent, and that create, that's problematic because uh, they uh, create all sort of toxic concerns. But we can't even make... Uh, uh, inroads fast enough uh, to get a shelter. The city's done what they were uh, required to do, put it put in the zone, and that's fine. Um, they p put it in the wrong place because the city, behind closed doors, understands that a shelter will never come in the Auburn Ravine area. Well, my understanding is I've, I've talked with some, some individuals, Auburn does not want a shelter. They will not have a shelter here in Auburn. They can go to, to, to the gathering end there in Roseville or some other place, but not here in Auburn. And my question is, why is it, why not have one here in Auburn when most of the people that, I, that I've seen here in Auburn are living here? Right. Alongside the roads, they're constantly panhandling. Right. You see the same old ones. I know that I know some of the church members. You know that they help them with food and shower once a week, right. which you know I, I I compliment them with being able to do just that little for them and with them. Right. right. Uh, and uh, the, the the church members that I've talked with, they have seemed to to learn so much from them that helps them to stay humble within their own selves. 
Right. And why is it that the ones that, that do not want to have anything to do with the homeless are so uh, dis or misinformed right. that maybe, just maybe, one of those homeless people could be their own child? Oh, that, that is so true. You know? Well, the motion that's going to get a shelter has to have the elements of the city, nonprofit, and faith-based. They all have to be working together. And the city's doing what they can do. What they should do is get the zone. It's unfortunate it took so long to get the zone. The length of time that it took to get the zone was described as kicking the can down the road. Well, that doesn't tell me that this is being well thought out or their due diligence. Nevertheless, it'll be a couple of years before we even get a shelter. The reality is that the problem of vagrancy, panhandling, will vagrancy and transients for sure. Panhandling, we're trapped, but it'll be a couple of years down the road. How proactive are we in getting a shelter? So it takes, you say, why? Isn't it happening? I think that I've found out it isn't the uh, city officials. It isn't uh, the faith-based people or nonprofit. It, it is the bulk. It is the silent majority. It is the community of Auburn. What are they and, so scared of? Well, the you know, I, I, I'm bringing the, uh, the depression on their land or their homes. Or? It's the basic thing. My people don't want the homeless people around. They don't want to see that element of society uh, around them. For whatever reason, I would find out that it was the silent majority, this element. That's where I've kind of pinned it. Because I know that the city is doing the best they can. And faith-based people, mm -hmm. God bless That's them. It, uh, uh, homelessness is all, always resolved by the community. Mm -hmm. So the city moves with legalities, restrictions, and cooperation. But it's those elements well that bring it about. But the faith-based people, the nonprofit people, they have a body. They have contingencies. They have congregations. They have the body of people in Auburn. And I watch that body of people uh, walk by me. Uh, my petitioning was really interesting because the question I asked, very first question, as 50,000 people walked by me, was, do you want a homeless shelter in Auburn? And I'm disappointed in how many people, the body of people I believe in Auburn, the ones that are not proactive, that are a cog in the wheel for us to move. The faith-based people, nonprofit, they need these people, and, and the body of them does contribute. It has to come from the community, donations and what have you. But I'm just wondering if that sentiment of that silent majority, that angry majority, is not what is keeping us from moving forward more faster. I know we're moving inroads. There's consortiums. There's 10-year plans. Let's do it. There's private people here that I've heard in town that are putting together funds and ideas because it does come from um, the community. We're a little yeah. bit hamstrung and focused in on the zone. We have to move. Okay, so that, that brings me to, uh, to another view here. Uh, I'm, what I'm seeing here is that someone told me years ago, back in the days of your uh, your Egyptians and your war Mongols, you know, fighting over land, property, and oil and gas and the whole bit. Well, you figure in 100 years, the people that were these kings and presidents and so are dead. Right. They have nothing to fight about no more. They're right. going to be gone. To, 200 years, I couldn't even remember who the king of Egypt was. Right. I couldn't right. remember who the president was 50 years ago. So here again, we have we have an a opportunity, we have a need within the community that says, help us get a shelter, help these panels. Right. Yeah, there's always going to be the poor amongst you know, the rich, and right. so vice versa. Right. But eventually, when you and I have gone, you know, and we're, we're Jesus is aside, <laughs> You know, we still are being leaving leaving this this earth unattained, and right. and not being able to uh, be a good farmer. You know, into farming good fruits. Right. If I leave here knowing that I didn't make my 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 voice known somehow, some way into the community to help an individual that is uneducated or that had been sentenced to to crimes that they he or she had not done, right. yet they uh, they 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 believe that they had no opportunity because they didn't have the money or the attorneys or so because it seems like it sways from one from the right wing to the right wing and never really into the center of, of the core of why it's going this way and way and that way. I mean, to me, if you have all your links strong, the right. whole chain flows right. within equal 
right. basis. Right. Okay, what I'm seeing here in our community in the last 50 years of my life right. is that it keeps swaying. It keeps swaying. Right. We've got to eat weekly. We got to fix. We got to fix. We got to. Right. We got. Right. Uh, but, but what can we do? What, oh, we don't want to do this. We always find an excuses right. of not stepping up right. and doing what we need to keep right. the whole train, the whole right. chain, the whole strong. Chain. Right. And this is the year 2014. Right. We shouldn't be having all these conversations right. and, and, and distractions and, right. and of all this political nonsense mm -hmm. that's keeping us away from, as you said earlier, uh, put the phones down and then put down the gadgets and let's have a one-on-one -on -one communication right. here. Right. And to me, uh, I will never, ever uh, keep the phone on or, or a TV on when I'm having a very important, valuable uh, communication. Absolutely. A talk. Absolutely. And so uh, we're, we're getting to a point in time here in ACTV that that we need to really stay on, on focus on, on letting the, the community know that, is that we need their support. Right. We need their signatures. We need right. them to get in there and, and, and get these shelters built, right. not just here in Auburn, and one in Loomis, one, right. one up here in New, Newcastle, right. and, and everywhere that their uh, homes would be. Let's put something, some shelter there for right. them. It doesn't make a difference who they are, right. what they've right. done, right. no matter what. I mean, the Marines say, you know, we leave no man behind. Right. Hello? Right. Is that what the Marines are doing right. and the community is not doing? Right. Right. I see that's what's going on. Right. I see that we have some people that are just so high and stuck in, the, in their own right. mentality that they, will, they refuse right. to give a, an African-American or an Asian a right. bite to eat, a, a, a sense of a smile right. uh, because it's something that they can relate to uh, that has something to do with Vietnam or, or the Africans and right. I mean there's always something that someone always wants to put in there as a negative right. Right, instead right. of a positive and saying, hey, it's in the past. Right. Today is the, you know, right. January 23rd, 2014. Right. By golly, I'm alive. Right. I'm not right. bleeding. I'm not dead. So right. evidently, I must be okay. I'm, right. I'm alive. Well, you know, you're, you're alluding to how we keep this all this linked together and they're broken links. And I alluded to the community. And I'm, I don't want to take a pot shot at the community. I want no. to inspire them to yeah. uh, uh, take back those dollars that you give to panhandlers and think twice. Twice, um, uh, and actually, do if you do that, then do something more in your community. If you're going to church, synagogue, temples, then do something more. You're you're the element that's dragging their feet. Maybe throwing out that dollar and thinking now you've uh, contributed to the homeless situation. In actuality, when you give out that dollar, it's more than likely a panhandler, and that is going. To alcohol mm -hmm. and in in relation to alcohol alcohol is part and parcel and comes along with homeless people it's unfortunate uh, you wake up on the ground and uh, think about how your day and uh, somebody offers you a drink you know you're hopeless and what have you but let's uh, let's take this to uh, the encampments and what's yeah. happening right now Okay. So when we uh, talk about this, uh, the toxic encampments that are behind the area that I've, I've uh, said from Wells Fargo, uh, all sorts of issues, uh, work has been done up there, but there's a, another new issue. The work that has been done was three owners, uh, property owners were trapped in this long trail. Uh, Jennifer Solomon uh, from the code enforcement uh, uh, part of the city trapped one of the property owners and uh, they are responding uh, to her letters. She is one diligent woman. Absolutely. I met her. She was uh, yeah, very uh, real honest. Uh, she's uh, she's on it. Uh, she has many of my phone calls. She does. She doesn't have to answer them all. She knows that. She just listens to me and <laughs> and uh, moves forward with things that uh, that she finds interesting. And I give her interesting things to move forward on. Uh, the other two property owners, I happen to have found out and they were completely unaware of the situation up there so I, I got them with a little prodding uh, and phone calls to go up Caltrans was one of them they did a heck of a job in December uh, one phone call I made to them the next day they had a surveyor out and within the next three weeks they cleaned up encampments they patch holes and fences they mowed they cut a little bit here and there they did a wonderful job posted signs then while I'm up there though we now have 
uh, an issue upon an issue is I uncover a cemetery, the old cemetery up there. And now concerns are immediately heightened because there is a homeless encampment right on top of the two grave sites that are there. And that's alarming just to see that. It goes from the sensitivity of dealing with homeless transient vagrants to now with uh, the proper care of those that remain there. So the city, I gotta watch whose name I mentioned here, let's see. I know the, uh, in actuality, I know that the, uh, the county's uh, facility services is on top of it and uh, the uh, one of the council members or two of the council members are on top of it. Uh, I know the city historian is on top of it. I know the county uh, attorney's on top of it. I raised a few more flags, uh, but the most important thing is that we expeditiously find and realize the border, the schematic of the cemetery, and immediately put closed fencing around it. If that's all that happens, that's the most appropriate things to do because people are leaving toxic materials and they're relieving themselves. Okay. Which and nobody expected to rest in peace. peace yeah, like so that. this which brings me to this question is how can the community help you with these issues? I mean you're doing the best to sit in here saying hey you're addressing these issues but what is it the community who do they go to other than yourself right. Right. or Jennifer who and what can they do to help this community to get a shelter, to stop this panhandling stuff? Right. If they're so really wanting these people not to be here and right. do all this, well, let's help them either move away right. or get them a place where they're not running around right. desecrating cemeteries and so on. We, we have, on. We have uh, 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 Chief Ruff Corn and Bridget Powers, a strong woman, uh, the mayor now, your mayor, uh, have handled the panhandling really good. It's the vagrant encampments that we're alluding to, which is an extension, and uh, the panhandlers. Well, isn't it because they don't have a place to go to? Well, that's uh, transients, number one, aren't looking for a place to go in town. They're looking to stay on the outskirts in these encampments and move on from town to town. Oh, oh, transients yeah. actually, through their own way of communicating, know to go to Auburn because Auburn is relaxed about the situation. Auburn gives bleeding heart kind of thing. Here, here's another dollar, another dollar. Not That's looking. Just we have to open up our eyes now. Uh, the panhandlers... Um, are handled good. Uh, Bridget uh, Powers and Ruffcorn, uh, Chief Ruffcorn, both have put out this to to try to capture and uh, eliminate the professional panhandlers. Some even drive up. They're not vagrant, transient. They drive up looking like homeless and stand there professionally uh, for four hours, capturing sixty dollars an hour, and then they drive home. They're the worst kind. <laughs> They're the worst kind. And and I picked off a few of them. Uh, they know me. I've gone up there a lot. This is in my neighborhood. I'm involved in my issues, and I'm concerned about that, but we've done that. But let's get to the point. What can people do? So um, you understand about Caltrans and their good work. I wanted uh, Auburn to realize that they're proactive. Now we have to do something about the cemetery. We, uh, w uh, in the emergency, see, I push things on an emergency need. And so the wheels of, uh, of council and, or of, of city can only move so fast. But with the prodding, we can uh, uh, write to uh, the county facility services, uh, to Farron Call there, who's more, she's more than glad to, she responded, uh, the county has responded to everything but the fencing. We're still wondering whether to do it, where it is. I've, I've talked to the historian, he's gonna find out the schematic. I'm not sure if it needs, well it does need more encouraging. The community has has to let uh, the county, so uh, facility services department with the county uh, is the person to write to to say that you're concerned about citizens of Auburn being treated like this. They want to rest in peace these people, at least put a fence around it. Okay, so again, um, so there, there is the first, uh, there is the first direction. But um, I know that the county environmental health people are being drawn into it, and they're going to put prods in the ground to see the toxic 
uh, 20 year trail. 20 years of this means there may be something there. It's better to, uh, to look into it and to completely disregard it. But um, while in the community, my community, about this, the, this issue of uh, uh, homeless encampments, I've heard broader things while I was petitioning. And a couple of two things resonated that came up. I had I'd recently had a great conversation uh, with uh, the editor of the Auburn Journal, a real nice guy. We sat down, we talked, uh, he wanted to know about everything I was doing and, uh, and was really complimentary. I'm not a reporter, I don't want to be a reporter. I know the perimeters in which to, uh, to appear uh, in a fair and balanced approach to anyone else wanting to uh, uh, bring something to their attention. But nevertheless, he liked uh, a couple of ideas that I have down the line and uh, that they would be newsworthy and uh, vital in, in my neighborhood. So one of them is, is uh, I'm dealing with the Rhodes people here in town, which is uh, Bernie Schroeder. And I talked to her about our concern about, uh, this is for you folks in the Auburn Ravine area on Mickelson. The speeding on Mickelson has been problematic for years. So if I'm cut short at any point, it uh, direct your attention to those who are physically feeling it. And I've, I've talked to all, to uh, all the apartment managers through petitioning, were further, I've further made more friends in my neighborhood. So I feel like I'm reflecting the sentiments of other people. There's other people, if you look behind me, standing behind me. And um, nevertheless, uh, Bernie Schroeder is, knows that the street is problematic. We need crossroad and stop sign put at certain junctures, starting right on Mickelson, where Mickelson hits Auburn Ravine. The only way this is going to happen is if we uh, talk to the, uh, uh, if you tell the city of the concern. The concerns are, are many, primarily the speeders. When the speeders come down Mickelson into this juncture at Auburn Ravine, and, uh, they are flying down the streets. Uh, there is drug use in the apartments up there, and I've watched the speeders, they're mostly young another concern. When the seniors want to cross, because there's no crosswalk going all the way up until the top, something has to be captured. Uh, crosswalk, stop sign, in order to send a signal to speed the speeders to slow down. People are, are the, there's seniors there, they waywardly try to cross the street. There's not only not a crosswalk, but they're putting themselves in harm's way. I'm concerned about the seniors. It's my area. Nevertheless, the there is a new dental office coming in right there uh, at the Auburn Villa apartment complex. These are both about 50 yards away from Auburn Ravine coming up from the 7-Eleven uh, to the, uh, the uh, uh, formerly a credit union place. It's going to be a dental clinic. I've talked to the workers there in about a month or so. It's going to be more traffic. So we have to control that street. Primarily, we have to control Mickelson. I'm told that it's been problematic. They one time put had speed bumps. They thought that would do it. But the law came in, the legalities and what have you, said you had to remove them. So the problem continues. Until somebody's run over or something, is that the only time to respond? So mm. I've seen speeding uh, before. In this town, you know the sign uh, issue involves speeders. I've seen them speed on when I lived on Edgewood Road. They fly down. I'm constantly out there telling them to slow down. So I would like the community of Mickelson, anybody living on Mickelson, I know there are many of you, uh, to begin to write into Bernie Schroeder or at, for, at the city. I'm not sure. I think it has. A, she's in a roads commission. Uh, nevertheless, uh, City Hall, to tell her of your concerns or write to me via Robert mm -hmm. and let me know. I want to know from my neighbors. Most of you are my neighbors. You're my neighborhood. Write to me about anything that I've mentioned. Seniors first, the road issue. We need to. We need to address the cemetery. It, it, you know, uh, when I use the words immediately, I know this kind of supersedes, well, the law moves this way. So are there any emergency measures? Well, not quite. So we hope to get everyone to move expeditiously. So when you think of the remains, when you think of the crosswalk, whether it's senior first, 
we have to uh, make some inroads and the only way to do it is not to call names is to call up to write in and not to take a fight to the city and turn it into a fight uh, to be effective we just have to be continual and adamant and let your voice be heard this is all about the voice of the community it's to be assertive you know and, and to be direct about how people want to live within their own community and have the rights you know met and and uh, and and so on. It's we're not to me. You're not really pushing or, or doing anything to to say anything against anyone. I, I see what we're doing here is, is basically building a stronger, more more fruitful uh, society and environment for our neighbors and our health, our children, our grandchildren, and so on. Mm -hmm. You know, again, I mean, we're we're here to not only just saying this. You know, we're 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 we're, we're bringing it to to. Um, Auburn and the rest of this community in California and saying, hey, let's stand up and let's work together with each other to make a stronger and, and more meaningful, you know, society and community. We have about just four more minutes, you know, left of, of this time. So I'm going to ask you again, you know, come back in here again and, and let's, let's just stay on this and, and keep um, repeating what we're doing, you know, to, to let people know, because not all people will be able to see this, this um, as we see it here, but others that will, they will pass it on, and it's, it's, it's a ripple effect. It's, it's going to go right. out, and it's going to come back. It may not be within a year or a month or a, mi a minute, right. but people will be able to see us for what we're doing here as we see <coughs> it, just because it's the community seeing the same thing. That's why we're Absolutely. here. We're here not just for our own self-being. We're here for our grandchildren and their children and right. their children. So we're, all we're doing is, is we're inviting people to come on. Right. We, let's get together. Let's sit at the table. Right. Let's put the issues on the table. Let someone, you know, sort them through. So this is the priority. This is the priority. Oh, this is a deeper, more important right. priority. And let's set the, the chain to be not just strong, mm -hmm. but the strong as it can be. Right. Okay? Right. So. Well, I believe, I believe it starts when I talk about community and your community and my neighborhood, your neighborhood, everyone's got a neighborhood. It starts right there. And how well do you know your neighbor and their issues? I'm not city bound for any kind of office and what have you. Though I was humored by the mm -hmm. editor asking me if I wanted to be a supervisor or a councilman. No, no, I, I'm not headed there, uh, though it isn't off but, the table. Yeah, but wouldn't uh, it but make, that, that's, that's, yeah, but wouldn't that's that make it point. a good point, you know, that no, maybe that, you could get really something done? You know, <laughs> I'll start talking like Richard Nixon or Walter Cronkite, uh. and you know who you are. No, <laughs> it, it is about my neighborhood and neighbors. If that's what resonates, how well do you know your neighbors? That tells me who you are. And if you do, then you'll hear their sentiments. And some of us in the neighborhoods, like me, um, are proactive. You can be in your own way. So it's important that the, uh, the neighborhoods uh, begin to respond mm -hmm. to each other. So I, I hope to continue uh, to do this. Uh, we, we have to work with each other. We have to work with city government. They're not bad guys. They're all... Well, guys and girls, to be fair. They're all well-meaning well people. They need sometimes direction with our voice. They represent us, not their own opinions. So let them give yeah, them your they're opinion. They're working for us. If, if we're not satisfied, and I hate to put it in these terms, they're elected people, then don't elect them. But at, if we have a poisonous position in that position, let's, let's move in an let's amicable way. So we, if we name call and what have you, uh, you know, make it adversarial, it's not going to go nowhere. Right. So this is a melting pot, a melting table of the community, the faith base, the nonprofit, and the city trapping all these kinds of issues. But uh, I hope to be uh, more, uh, I can't tell you how thankful I am to all the city government people and, uh, and the, the community, the merchants that, uh, that have been so kind to me. Uh, I could rattle off, I know when I stood in front of Save Mart, Save Mart is my place. I, I cook, I eat, that's it. I, could, I spend my life at Save Mart. And the people there are just wonderful, personable. But uh, I've gotten this way because of my personality involves a lightheartedness and friendliness. Uh, it's opened up. Uh, it's opened up a lot of conversation. So I, I thank you, um, uh, City well, Council members. I thank members. you too, Jerry. Uh, yeah, oh. you know this is ACTV, <laughs> and, and welcome. You know, and uh, this goes out to the community here in Auburn. 
Uh, my name is Robert, and I've been here for going on three years. And I have met a, a variety of people here, and very wonderful people that have a lot of compassion, and importance, inspiration. And this is just one gentleman out of the many of you here in Placer County in Auburn. So uh, I myself say thank you for joining us here at ACTV and allowing us to speak from our hearts you know, with love and compassion, teaching each and one of you. And God be with everyone, you know, and may we, you know, endure to uh, make our community that much more safer. And uh, peace to all, and Happy New Year. Thank you for joining us here.